Yo everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a review on the Nabla Cosmetics Close Up Futuristic Foundation. Now I have never done a review on any of Nabla Cosmetics products in the past. No other reason than I've just forgotten or I just didn't for whatever reason. So I'm actually going to be reviewing not just this but two other products as well. The other two would be the Nabla Cosmetics Close Up Concealer as well as their close-up smoothing pressed powder. These two are still very, very new. The concealer itself has been out since some time last year. If you followed me for a while, you will know that this is one of my holy grail concealers and I absolutely love it. But again, I've never gone into much detail. So I thought today, as well as demoing it all on my face, I could then review all of these base products because these are three products which will make up the entirety of your base makeup, aside from using Lucetta powder of which I'm going to be using a Colourpop one, the no filter setting powder in the shade Banana because I don't have the Nabla one because it only comes in one shade and it looks a bit too light. I prefer personally to use yellow banana shaded um, loose setting powders because it stops you getting that white cast under your eyes. Now there is only one retailer in the UK of Nabla Cosmetics which is Beauty Bay. I am in a Beauty Bay affiliate FYI in case you did not know. Nabla is an Italian brand and it's a very indie brand as well. It's still not very well known, but oh my God, their products are amazing. Nabla, this year especially for me, and it was started kind of last year as well, is definitely one of those brands which I love all of their products that I have tried. I've got one of their eyeshadow palettes. It's amazing. Then I bought the concealer. I fell in love. But when the foundation was announced, I was like, I bet I will love this too. And not gonna lie, I absolutely love it. I give this a 10 out of 10. It's absolutely excellent. It has joined my holy grail collection. This foundation itself costs 25 pounds. And in my eagerness to buy it, I bought the wrong shade. So I've actually bought two. For you guys, I have spent an additional £25 to get the right shade. So the first one that I bought, which is in the shade T30, is a little bit dark for me, but the shade which is a perfect match is this one here called T10. Altogether, there are 20 shades, which isn't too bad, considering they are a very small and growing brand. And I do have to say, from looking on the website, their deeper shades are quite good as well, as in there's quite a large amount of deeper shades. So hopefully, there should be something for everybody. And what they've done is they have given names like D10, D20, which means dark, L means light, M is medium, and T is tan. So I come under tan. T30, which is the one that I bought first, is for tan complexions with olive undertones. And the one that matches me is for medium to tan complexions with golden undertones. So I sit right at the top bit of medium and tan. Now, I am at my palest right now. This is the palest of the pale that I will get. And this is a perfect match for me. By the time the summer comes and I start to get deeper, I will easily be able to blend T30 into T10 so that I can still maintain wearing these foundations. It looks really, really small to look at. I mean, it's tiny, look at it. But it is 30 mil. So it is a standard amount as it is for most foundations. I will swatch both of these on my face just so that you guys can see how they compare with each other. And if you are a little bit deeper than me, maybe you will like this. The one in the middle, T20, which is for tan complexions with warm undertones. From what I've seen online, it's got a slight kind of pinky undertone. So that would not quite work well for somebody like me. So just to show it to you up close, it comes in this plastic squeezy bottle. You just take off the top and it's got this squeezy thing on the top. So it comes out very easily. I've not had any issues with any of it coming out. And this is the color that you can see of the foundation. All right, I will read the two descriptions that I've got. One that I've got of Beauty Bay and one that is on the box itself. On Beauty Bay, it says a medium coverage foundation suitable for all skin types. Close up futuristic foundation offers weightless and buildable coverage that lasts all day made with innovative coated pigments. This extremely blendable formula evens out skin tone for an incredible soft focus, naturally luminous matte finish. And that's it. And on their box, it says even out your complexion in a seamless second skin perfection with this weightless and ultra blendable foundation. The innovative texture gives a luminous matte finish and an incredible soft focus effect with a medium buildable coverage. So combining them both, do I agree with the whole medium buildable coverage claim? Yes, I do. It is definitely buildable. I actually find that I don't need to layer it too much. And because it has got that 
luminous matte finish. It means it's not overly matte where you look unwell. It actually makes you look matte, but still very, very healthy. And I love that about this foundation. And it says soft focus finish. All I can say is that when I have it on my face and I look at my skin, and I have to say it is in combination with using the powder, my skin just looks amazing. It looks healthy and it's got that blurring kind of effect which you get from both the foundation as well as the powder and I absolutely love that about this. It does not emphasize any of my pores. It literally blurs them out. It does not emphasize any texture. It covers them, fills them in and my skin looks flawless, natural and matte and it just looks amazing. I know that it says buildable coverage that lasts all day so it's not really given a claim and to, in terms of like 24 hours which I think is a good thing. I have worn this for up to 12 hours and it looked amazing after 12 hours because I used it, maybe because I used it with the powder, it all stayed completely matte for 12 hours. Even the natural oils in my skin desperately tried to get out and they just could not. My skin just looked perfect all day. After 12 hours, it only looked maybe slightly shiny, but when I say slight, I mean like how I am now with moisturizer on my face. But it for 12 hour wear, it really, really kept in the oil. So I would definitely agree when this says it's suitable for all skin types. Now, if you have got oily skin, I would definitely maybe suggest topping it up with a mattifying powder like the Too Faced one or the Nabla Close Up one as well. Because I do have to say with this one, I've used it with a variety of foundations from matte to semi kind of matte as well as dewy and it has kept my foundation in place all day. Stopped the shininess from coming through in the dewy foundation sooner than it would have been if I hadn't used this. And I just think it's absolutely excellent. I am in love with this. A little bit goes a really, really long way. Like I said, it is definitely not full coverage. It is definitely buildable full coverage. It is weightless, it is seamless, it is natural, it blends easily, it blends beautifully. It does not get patchy. It did not settle within any lines or marks on my face. I did not notice any movement or separation on my face. And I was sitting next to the radiator when I was wearing this, so I was getting hot. It does not oxidize on the skin either. It is just an all round amazing foundation. It is transferable, yes, but only slightly so. Again, I think that has a lot to do with me using this on top. And the thing that stands out the most to me is that whole soft focus claim. There are so many brands out there that say soft focus, Focus, soft focus and it's very difficult to kind of describe what the hell does soft focus mean it means like there's almost like a blur over the skin where you look at somebody's face and you're like where are their pores they look a little bit too airbrushed it makes you look airbrushed it makes you look flawless and I am definitely going to repurchase this I absolutely love it 10 out of 10 is excellent. So what I'm gonna do first is I am going to apply this to my face, then I will review the other products as I use them, just so that you guys can see. So first off, I'm going to use this primer, which I've been using for a while now, it's by Revolution Pro. It's called the Pore Blur Primer. So it does as the name suggests, and that's why it works actually very nicely with this. But to be honest, any primer will do, because this foundation is so good that I would actually say you probably don't even need a primer, but I just like to use one anyway. All right, before I start any of that, let me just swatch both of these on my face just so that you can see what they look like. Just holding them up close, you can see the slight difference in the shade. So this one is T10, that one is T30. Okay, so here you can see this one here is T10 and that one there is T30. You can definitely see this one is a lot more yellow undertones to it and this one has definitely got more olive undertones to it as the description states. So this is just to let you guys know how it would potentially work on your skin. In MAC I'm an NC40 FYI. For all my other shades of foundations you can search on my channel for all the reviews that I've done. So just apply the primer all over your face. All right, so the brush that I'm going to be using today is this Real Techniques uh, buffing brush. Any brush like this will generally do. It's a thick-ish sort of foundation. It's not liquidy and drippy. 
um, but it's also not very very thick and difficult to blend so a brush like this is generally okay so what I generally tend to do is I tend to use about two blobs of this on each side of my face just to cover any imperfections in case you're wondering what that is I just dyed my hair before I did this you guys this video which is why my hair's looking really frizzy today for some reason I will fix it by the end of the video I promise so this is two dots that you can see here so I'm just going to start to blend it into my face so you can see look at how easily it just blends in I was a little bit light-handed with those blobs by the way I'm generally quite heavy with the amount of foundation I tend to apply but Okay, so this is one layer that I have applied to my face. As you can see, the colour is absolute perfect, perfect match. You can see my reference point, which is my beauty spot here, which is kind of covered, but not completely, as this is medium coverage. It blends so easily and beautifully. It's not sticky or uneven, and I love that about this foundation. It doesn't dry straight away, which is great. So that means that while you're applying it, you're not under pressure to do it really, really fast. Unless, of course, you're in a hurry in the morning like we all are. And that's it. It doesn't really have much of a smell. I washed my brush with something which was like strawberry scented. So I'm like, it smells like strawberries. It's not like this concealer, which is infused with some sort of coconut something, which smells amazing, by the way. It's a, quite a standard smell, fairly chemically, but not too overpowering or annoying. What I'm gonna do now is apply a little bit extra like I always tend to do on these my problem areas this is where I tend to go red when I get a bit hot this is where a lot of my hyperpigmentation and my scarring is as well it doesn't look cakey or anything like that when you layer it more than once which is great and what I love about this is even though it's medium to buildable and you can still see a little bit of your own natural skin color underneath it's nothing offensive, like it doesn't look bad because it still makes your skin look really natural. It doesn't make it look all flat and you know how like some full coverage foundations it's just a bit too much. Even though it's not cakey, it's just too unnatural looking. Sometimes having your skin peek through a little bit is what makes the difference of you looking naturally beautiful uh, or like a doll. I love it, it looks great. It started to dry as well, so it looks nice and even for you guys so you can see all right what we're going to do now is now i'm going to move on to the concealer this i've had for a good couple of months now and i absolutely love it it costs 15 pounds which is quite pricey considering it is a minor minor four mil four mil is nothing it's nothing which is quite disappointing nabla if you've done the standard amount of 30 mil for this you should have really upped it this is probably out of all the concealers the one which contains the least despite the fact that the packaging is quite a decent size very misleading the packaging is actually a lot larger than some of my other concealers but it just doesn't contain that much and then when you open it you've got this dofa applicator very similar to Tarte's shape tape which has got a little nib in there making it easy to glide across the contours and panes of your face all together it comes in nine shades which is quite good because there is a very very pale shade and then a very very dark shade my shade for reference is golden beige which is described as for medium complexions with yellow golden or olive undertones so quite a few of you will be able to get away with wearing this because you will see how it works with my skin tone for me this shade is quite a brightening under eye shade but i absolutely love it i always always reach for this and the only reason i probably haven't finished it yet considering it's only four mil is because I've got so many other concealers and I use different ones on different days. So it is, and I'm reading the description again, sorry you guys, a full coverage concealer, which it absolutely 110% is. I love it. It's suitable for all skin types, completely 100%. Covers imperfections, yep. Dark circles, yep. Redness and discoloration, yep. For a natural, flawless finish, completely. Out of all my concealers, this is the best. It literally covers everything and it is completely smooth under the eyes and does not budge all day as long as you set it. Smooth, creamy formula which glides over the skin for effortless application and blending, completely. All right, in terms of the ingredients and why it's got that coconut stuff, there's something coconut related in here. I can't remember exactly because I don't obviously have the box anymore. But, oh, 
Oh my god, I could just keep doing this all day. It's got some sort of coconut something in it. I don't know what it is, but I love, love, love it. So I'm going to apply this to my under eyes. And like I said, I'm going to set it with my ColourPop No Filter Setting Powder, which is in the shade Banana. And look at this brand new, clean, unused Real Technique sponge. I love it. I love it. I literally just threw out like five beauty blenders, which had gone moldy with all that black stuff in it. Ugh. So I opened up a brand new one. Look at it, lovely and spongy. So this is what I'm going to be using to blend out the concealer. Did you see the way that that has glided? No snagging, no nothing. It is that smooth. Okay, now that the concealer is done and it has been set, you can see that it looks nicely brightened. Yes, I look a little bit stark, but remember how makeup generally looks when you first apply it to your face because everything is still quite matte and nothing's come through yet. Now we are going to move on to the Nabla Close Up Smooth Pressed Powder. My shade is in medium. This costs £21, which is not cheap whatsoever. And it comes in three shades. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this because there's light, medium and dark. And just from looking at the picture of the dark one, it don't look that dark. So I'm not sure how that's going to really work for people who've got quite deep skin tones. So my one, which is medium and contains 11.5 grams, is for medium light or medium tan complexions. Now, to be honest, I was a little bit skeptical about buying this because you guys know that I've been using my Too Faced Peach Perfect Mattifying Powder for the best part of almost a year. And I have used nothing else to set my makeup other than that. This now, you guys, are amazing. The best pressed setting powder I have ever, ever used. In case I haven't mentioned already giving this a 10, this a 10, this also gets a 10, 3 10 out of 10s, Nabla. I'm in love with your brand, I am in love with your brand. I've left their box in my room somewhere, it comes in like a hexagonal box, I don't know why you just didn't have a hexagonal shaped one of these, but fine, whatever. Not a deal breaker. It is a matte pressed powder, suitable for all skin types completely, yep, whether you're dry, whether you're normal, normal combo or uh, oily. Close Up Smooth Pressed Powder is a formulated with soft focus ingredients to minimise pores and fine lines while controlling shine. Available in three shades, this lightweight and ultra fine powder melts perfectly into the skin for a flawless natural matte finish contained in a mirrored compact for on the go touch ups. I agree with it a hundred percent. Now before I bought the foundation, I actually bought this first because like I said, I bought the wrong shade of the foundation when I bought this. So until I got the correct shade, I was continuously using this on top of other foundations and straight away I fell in love with it. It literally blurs out everything. My skin looks smooth, it looks natural. You can't see hardly any of my texture, which is almost unheard of. Minimizes pores, yep, fine lines, but I don't have any, but I would assume yep, considering how good it is. Control shine completely, melts into the skin for a flawless natural matte finish. Completely, I absolutely love, love, love it. I was also worried about the shade. I was like, oh my God, is it gonna make me look a bit too white? And that sort of thing, because when you've only got three shades, you're generally thinking, okay, this should be something that can work for quite a lot of different shaded people within that range, like medium tone. This one definitely does it. I absolutely love it. I've been using it with my F30 Large Powder Brush by Sigma, so I'm gonna do that again today. Just quickly gonna show you up close. Look at it, it's so sophisticated and sleek. I love the packaging. And then just a normal little click up here. It's got a mirror inside, which is pretty decent. And this is what the colour itself looks like up close. And you don't need to go in heavy at all. This will last quite a long time. 
just have to just kind of dab your brush in a couple of times like this and apply it to your face. It doesn't kick up a lot of powder, which is great, which means that this will last you a very long time. Some which are too powdery kick up too much and you end up finishing them very, very fast. And there we have it. It is as easy and as simple as that. As you saw, I did not load it on. I did not pile it on. My face feels soft. Considering I need to go for hair lasering because I've got a bit of hair growing back, it feels soft and smooth and gorgeous and I love it. So what I'm going to do now is let me finish off the rest of my makeup and I will be back just so you guys can see how it all sits nicely once it's settled onto the face and how it looks with the rest of my makeup on. Okay, I am done. The rest of my makeup is all complete and finished. For reference on my lips, I'm wearing a Nabla lipstick. It's called They're called Dreamy Matte Liquid Lipsticks. This one is in the shade... Noblesse Oblige. This is the first time I'm actually wearing it, so I can't really comment on how good it is, so don't ask me. Or you can ask me in the comments, because obviously by the time video goes up, I would have worn it for like weeks or whatever. Anyway, so it feels lovely and soft. I'm loving how my skin looks. It just looks flawless. It looks matte. It looks healthy. My highlighter is not blended, excuse me. And that's it, really. So I cannot recommend all of these highly enough you will not regret using any of these and out of all three if I had to pick uh, from my favorite to my least favorite even though I love them all my favorite is definitely this powder it's probably the best powder I've ever used and I've used quite a few followed by the concealer which is absolutely excellent followed by the foundation so obviously like I said they're not cheap if you were to buy all of them, you would be spending upwards of more than £50. So if you want to kind of spread out your costs and you want to see what you want to buy and try first, this, this, and then this. So that's it for my review. I hope you guys found it useful and helpful. Like, comment, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.